Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Club, I am Penge and welcome to Red Planet Farming, which is a strategy game all about farming on the planet Mars. So it's set in the future and colonies of people are setting up on Mars. We've got little groups of scientists doing research, we've got people just setting up homes here because they want a fresh new start on a new world and all that kind of stuff, and they are going to want to have food. They're going to want to grow their own food, they want to become a bit self-sufficient, they don't want to have to keep importing food in from Earth anymore because it's expensive and all that kind of stuff. And so we are then responsible for making sure that everybody has enough to eat. So we have to make sure that we grow the right crops, that we can afford to buy the latest crops. We have to make sure that we buy the right upgrades so we can upgrade the various places where we're growing stuff in order to make sure they can survive the harsh Martian atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I thought it sounded very, very intriguing indeed. As ever, there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description below if you are interested. And this game is entirely free. It is entirely free, which is brilliant because free is a very good price. So yes, there is a link if you want to go and have a little look and download the game for yourself and do some Martian farming, all of your very own. But I think we'll just crack on, I think. Let's just crack on and go and grow ourselves some space potatoes. Okay, so we have a very important looking letter from the Interplanetary Department of Agriculture dated August the 29th, 2120. So just over 100 years into the future. After careful review, the Interplanetary Department of Agriculture is pleased to offer you the position of Regional Agriculture Director at our Gale Crater Outpost on Mars. This position will require your relocation from Earth to Gale Crater Mars. Yes, I kind of assumed I would be moving there to do the job, gotcha. As department chair, you will be responsible for growing enough food to feed the population of the settlement. The settlement consists of scientists conducting research on the ancient lake that used to exist in Gale Crater, as well as volunteers from Earth that have moved to the Red Planet looking for a fresh start. Okay, so we've got two types of people. We've got scientists and we've got sort of, you know, colonists, I suppose, setting up a little sort of base there and living new lives on Mars. Once you arrive on Mars, you will receive further briefing on your responsibilities. Sincerely, Bert Tumble. <laughs> Bert Tumble. Is he related to Mr. Tumble at all? Because that would be a little bit worrying. That's one for current sort of parents of young kids right now. Interplanetary Department of Agriculture. Okie dokie. Right, well, there we go. Best move to Gale Crater then. And here we go, we pick a region, but we only have the one region, so yeah, we'll pick Gale Crater. The outpost at Gale Crater is home to the first Martian branch of the Interplanetary Department of Agriculture. The site is a base for scientists conducting research. Oh yeah, we know that. Scientists and volunteers. Yeah, indeed. So scientists and colonists. And there are some hazards. So we might experience dust storms, cold snaps, and radiation. I mean, I don't know what to pack to cope with dust storms, cold snaps and radiation. I mean, I mean, is there one outfit that will do the whole sort of lot of these? Is there one outfit that will cover dust storms, cold snaps and radiation? Or do we need to pack three separate outfits? Oh, I do not know. OK, right. Well, here we go. Let's just you know, throw anything into our suitcase and then move to Mars. Gale Crater, year 1, 2020 AD, and the population is only five. So there are only five people right now. Okie dokie. And there we go. Oh, crikey. Hello there. So this is Marvin Demartini, the assistant to the Regional Agriculture Director. Oh, I've got an assistant. I've got an assistant and he has Mars earrings. <laughs> that is just brilliant. And and a very, a very fabulous looking beard. Looks like you finally made it to Gale Crater. Took you long enough to get here. Sorry, I, I, I went the wrong way. I, I got out of Earth and turned right instead of left. And I ended up at, at Mercury. It was very embarrassing. Um, supposedly, the IDA already told you that your job on Mars is to feed all of the people that live at the outpost. Hopefully, you do a better job than the guy they, they just fired <laughs> that was in your position. Oh, dear. I'll quickly go over how you can start planting crops so that I can get back to my nap. Uh, I mean, back to work. Okie dokie. Right, so let's see. So we've kind of got a little tutorial going on. Okay, well, I guess we can start with something easy, like potatoes, space potatoes. Click on the seeds tab below. Click on the potato seed pack. Okie dokie. So we've got seeds, upgrades, and buildings. I know we've got that. There appears to be a dust storm underway, I imagine. Is that where we are now? It says dust storm. Um, there's something here and something here. There's 10 somethings, 10 sunlight meter. There is no radiation. I can also see we have some power number of colonists, that's how much money we have, I imagine. And we're producing entirely no food and we're making entirely no money. Brilliant, okay. And there's a little outpost in the middle there. And there's just a massive great solar panel over here. And we have these little domes where it looks like we can build in. So, okay, so we'll go to seeds and we'll pick up some potatoes then. Okay, I feel like we should put them just there because that's where the tutorial arrow is telling us. You'll notice the potatoes are unhappy. Sentient space potatoes. Oh yes. 
as kind of a, a sort of a wailing face. Our domes have built-in life support, but some crops need extra resources to survive on Mars. Click on the upgrades tab and select the irrigation system. Okay, right. Well, well yes, they need water, of course. Um, okay, that's the irrigation system, I assume. Yes. Okay, so do we just drop that in? Okay. There we go. Now they've got a green happy face. I'm impressed, but only because the last guy before you set the bar so low. But you seem more competent than him, for now. Oh my goodness, how terrible was the other guy? Deary me. Okay, anyways, let's try and keep it moving so I can get back to <coughs> work. Click on the C's tab and select spinach. Okay, there is some spinach. I feel like we should put the spinach just there. Some crops are weak to certain Martian weather hazards. The weather forecast is at the bottom of the screen. And unlike on Earth, it's pretty accurate. Oh, that's a forecast. So at some point there is going to be a dust storm. Okay, right, that sounds unpleasant. Also, the spinach is sad. We have sad, sentient spinach. It looks like there's a dust storm predicted for this year. It turns out spinach doesn't like dust, which is annoying because it means we need to protect it. So that the dust dome and place on the plot with spinach. Okay, so there's an upgrade, which is a dust dome. Okay, well, let's pop it on top of that. And now the spinach are happy. Okay, so the potatoes don't care about the dust storm. The spinach is a little bit fussy. Okay, okay, I think that's enough talking for today. There's more to learn, but I'll explain it another time because I don't feel like doing it now. Hit the play button in the bottom right to see how the crops fare over the year. This is going to happen over a year. <laughs> okay, you're going to go for a nap for a year. Okay, right, well, I'll see you in a year's time then. Um, okay, ah, there we go. So time passes. Now there is a big dust storm. But because our spinach is protected, it's looking very happy. And look at that, there's lots of bountiful crops. Is that all we're growing? Is that all we're growing? Hey everybody, it's potatoes and spinach for dinner again. Okay, that was it. We just grew two types of things. So we grew more spinach than potatoes. Nothing was damaged. The population is still five. Uh, tips of the year. I mean, that year went by very, very quickly. Planting high numbers of a specific crop may cause it to go out of stock next year. And even if left unprotected, there's a small chance that crops won't take any damage throughout the year. Okay, we produced nine food, which I assume is more than enough for the five people. And we earned ourselves nine, whatever they are, <laughs> kind of crop monies or something. I don't know. But nine coins. Okay, I accept that report. So now the population has gone up. Oh, that's very good. Okay, so a year has gone by, but now the population is six. So now do we just carry on from there or do we have Captain Tutorials coming in? There he is, there's Marvin. Hello, Marvin. Still wearing the same clothes I see a year later. I noticed that some more settlers arrive at the outpost. The population will rise as time goes on and more carrier spacecrafts arrive with additional settlers. Yes, indeed, increased by one. You need to make sure that you grow enough food to feed all of your settlers each year. If you fail to do this, the population will start to fall. Yes, I kind of get that concept. A rapidly decreasing population will likely raise a red flag to the Interplanetary Department of Agriculture about your performance as regional director. Well, international, no, Interplanetary Department of Agriculture, get those red flags ready. <laughs> get plenty of them ready, because I suspect you might need them. Okay, so what are we going to do then? However, an outpost with a growing population could make you suitable for a promotion. This means becoming regional director at other outposts around the globe. Oh, so there's other outposts that we might need to go to, but we've got to sort of, you know, sort of prove our worth here. Okay. Oh, now it's just let me get on with it. Okay, so there's no sort of timer on this. As soon as we press this, it will kick into life, but we have no actual sort of timer. We can sort of take our time. We can look at the seeds and the upgrades and the buildings and have a little look at what there is. Okay, so... Seeds. What do we have? We've got potatoes. We have ourselves some spinach. We have ourselves some arugula. Keep this leafy green crop well hydrated. It might grow back next year. Oh, that sounds quite good. It does cost seven and it needs irrigation and cold snap protection. Um, and it only provides enough food for four people. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to afford that unless we put it onto there. Could we put that? Hang on, because that's already got irrigation and that's already got a a sort of a dust bubble thing. So how much is the spinach? The spinach is three. So if we do that, put that into there, that will create us five earnings and it'll feed five people. So I quite like the idea of that. So I put the spinach back into there. That leaves us with 13 monies left. If we get this, it's very expensive and it only feeds four, but that's enough for what we've got right now. Because if it does come through, we'll produce nine food. and We've only got six people that we need to feed. And then I think it might have a chance to come back. So let's just check. So uh, there we go. So we need to give it 
um, irrigation, which we can put into that thing, so that thing is already irrigated, and cold snap protection. So where's that? Um, do we have cold snap protection? Is that a building? No. No, we do not have that. That must unlock in year three. Okay, do you know what? Let's stick with what we know. Let's just do exactly the same thing again. <laughs> there we go. We will just do exactly the same thing. So all the all the colonists going, what are your plans in this year? What exciting things have we got? And I'm just there going, well, you know, last year, you know, you love the potatoes and the spinach. You told me that they were great. I thought we could just do that again. And they're all sort of groaning at me going, oh no. <laughs> Um, it looks like we've got two dust storms, but I think that's fine. That will cope with the dust storm. So, um, so yeah, okay. Well, let's see how we get on then. So, I imagine it's going to be more or less the same as the other one. So, a uh, dust storm coming in. They look fine. And another dust storm coming in, sort of, what, two-thirds of the way through the year. Lots of crops growing. They look very lovely. And boom, the year ends. Okay, we harvest all the things. We get potatoes and spinach again. And there we go. So... Slightly less potatoes and spinach. Completing research tasks is a great way to earn additional money. There's research. And um, yeah, there you go. We heard that one before. Okay. Well, yes, I accept this. Let us go on to year three. Ooh. A new group of settlers from Earth has arrived. The population has leapt up to 12. Okay. Right. We might want to start growing some more things. Attention. Earth is planning to launch a shipment this year to bring supplies to Mars and should be landing next year. Put in a request for the item you wish to be delivered. Hover over for more info. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay, so what does that do? It requires radiation protection and costs four. It is perennial, it says there. So that will just last, will it? Whereas that's annual. So we have to keep planting that, whereas that will just stay there forever. Um, but it only brings three, but then we don't have to keep planting it repeatedly. That will just generate three food once we've set it up forever. I think we go for that. Let's go for peppers. Let's get something that just keeps giving us a little bit back each time. So yeah, we'll have peppers, please. Now the outpost has been open for a few years and you still haven't changed your clothes, the scientists here are really starting to pick up on their research. Occasionally, they will ask for assistance with their research if we aren't already busy enough running an entire farm on our own. I mean, we're not that busy, are we? We're not that busy. We have a year to, to grow some potatoes and some spinach for 12 people. <laughs> I, th I think that's not too big a job, to be fair, but okay. Anyways, they often offer rewards for your help, so it's probably worth it. You can click the research button to the right to view your current research objectives. Okay, so we've got a little button here for research stuff. The hunt for curiosity. Ah, are they going to go and try and find the curiosity rover? Oh, that's nice. A group of scientists at the outpost are planning an expedition around Gale Crater to locate the remains of the Curiosity Rover from 2012. Unfortunately, they don't have a big enough group yet to conduct the expedition, and I'm asking for your help in recruiting more people to move to Gale Crater to join. Okay, so we just need to keep growing the population. So keep feeding them well. Eventually, that will tick up. And when they do get to population 25, we will get 25 coins. That could be very, very handy indeed. However, now we need to feed 12 people. We do have a new upgrade. We've got a heater that provides cold snap protection. Now, what did that stuff need? That stuff needed cold snap protection. So it might grow back next year, but it does cost seven right now. So we're going to have to put that in. So that will cost us seven of our monies. And how much is cold snap protection? Another five. So that would take 12 money just to get us how much food would that be but it might come back next year so 12 money to get us four so we'd need another eight yeah that's that's not good is it that's not good at all the spinach is not i like the spinach it's nice and stable it's cheap it's you know fairly simple to do we've got the dome for it and it gives us five food so we'll put that in because that's nice and straightforward we've got five now we just need to get ourselves another seven more food covered how much is it to buy the potatoes we could buy the potatoes. Put them into there for two. Let's do that. Oh, no. Is that going to be enough? Hang on, hang on, hang on. How much do potatoes make? Potatoes make four. So what we could do is, this time round, let's put the potatoes into there, and then let's put potatoes into that one, and then also get an upgrade to put an irrigation system into there. An upgrade adjacency discount? 
Well, I wasn't aware, made aware of that, Mr. Mars Earrings Beardy Don't Change Your Clothes Man. Oh, that's great. It cost only three. Oh, that's very good indeed. And that leaves with ten money left and we've got an extra bit of food. Okay, that's very encouraging indeed. So yeah, now we can't get this in because that thing costs seven. This arugula, which other people might have heard of. I never have. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, that would require seven for the actual crop itself. And then we need irrigation, which we could put here to get an adjacency. That would be three. And then we'd need the heat as well, which was five, was it? Yes, we can't do that right now, but we might be able to do that next year. There is a cold snap coming. Do they need to be protected against cold snaps? I don't think the potatoes do. Okay, well, let's see, shall we? Let's have a little go. I don't think any of these things are affected by a cold snap. I'm pretty sure that that does not matter. There we go. So a cold snap is on its way. Ah, we could have put... I see, right. Okay, so if there's no cold snap, you don't necessarily need to protect against that. So like that there, this time around, that sort of dust shield was no use because there was no storm. Okay. So this time we grew a lot more potatoes and spinach because we've got two of the potato things. Crops of irrigation requirements can take damage at any time in the forecast if left unprotected. Okay. Longer storms in the forecast do more damage to unprotected crops than shorter ones. That makes perfect sense. Okay, right. Population goes up to 14. And what do we have now? Is he coming back to tell us what to do? The Martian Times. There's a newspaper. Oh, this is wonderful. How does it get delivered? <laughs> a group of dogs arrive via spacecraft at Outpost. Citizens are reportedly delighted with the recent arrival of a group of new furry friends at the settlement. The dogs are still learning to adjust to Mars' low gravity. After discovering, they jump too high when greeting their new owners. <laughs> just, they bound up and then just carry on going <laughs> through space. Martian colonists are annoyed with how often they do laundry. Extreme amounts of red dust residue left behind on clothes from everyday Martian life have required many citizens to do laundry more often than they previously did on Earth. Some citizens have even started dressing only in red to get a few more wears between washes. That's actually very sensible. If you buy clothes that are exactly the same colour as this planet, it doesn't matter if they get dirty. Okay, lovely. So Mr. Chappie is not coming to tell us stuff. He's not coming to tell us what's going on. So we need to make sure that we now cater for 14 people. Ah, the peppers have arrived. However, can we cater for can we cater for radiation protection? I don't think we can, but it looks like there is going to be no radiation sort of spikes or whatever this time round. Um, I think maybe we play it safe. I do want to get this arugula stuff in. And we've got 23 monies. So I think what we could do is let's put that into there. They're going to have a non-plus face. Then we need to put a heater into there. Okay, so that is now happy. They're toasty and warm and they're irrigated, so that will grow. That gives us only four, though, which is not particularly brilliant. So let's get ourselves the spinach, because we know that will be absolutely fine. And that's nine. We need another five. We need another five things. Okay, right. Put that into there. Yeah, this is, this is not going to work, is it? Put that into there. That gives us 13. Now, can we... Hang on. How much is the upgrade for the irrigation system? That's four. Four monies and three power. Do you know what? That's fine. We get a discount, so it's three, because it's next to another thing that's got irrigation. So, yep, yeah, just run the same pipes through. There we go. And put potatoes into there. And we are sorted. So, 17 food produced for the 14 people that are going to be here. And it makes us 18 monies. Yeah, we need to get things that make us more money. But, um, but okay, right now, that looks fine. So there we go. So run time on. Let's see what happens. So dust storm. Haha, -ha, take that dust storm. You're no match for our mighty farming defences. And then a cold snap. And that should not affect the sort of whatever that was. Ar arugula at the top there. And there we go. So we get all of these lovely things. Like so. And there we go. So lots of different foods now. All of three types. Still mostly potatoes. But that's fine. Perennial crops will grow back each year unless they completely wilt. Now that's quite good because that means that that arugula stuff is going to be there. So it costs us a little bit to get started to actually plant initially. But now it's just going to be there. So we'll accept that. Go. Okay. Population up to 16. And that stuff is there now. So that stuff is there. So already we're getting four food and we haven't even done anything. So since you're from Earth, I guess you're pretty clueless. 
when it comes to radiation. Well, yeah, I'm not the best. You can check the radiation level for the year and the radiation meter just before, uh, just above, sorry, the forecast, which I've highlighted below. Yes, oh dear. There's going to be a little bit of radiation this year. Okay, no. Radiation can affect your crops at any time during the year, which is really annoying if you ask me. The higher the radiation level, the more damage your crops will take. Some crops are genetically modified with full immunity to radiation, but others have a weakness to radiation and will suffer if you don't protect them. Indeed, our sort of chilli pepper things are a bit like that. Okay, marked for expansion. Why is that marked for expansion? What's that about then? So that's a radiation shield. Okay, well how about then? Let's just get the spinach in here. That spinach is nice and straightforward. We'll pop the spinach into there. So we've got nine food out of the 16 we need. That's absolutely fine. And now, oh, oh dear, there's no potatoes. We're out of, we're out of space potatoes. Okay, right, we're gonna have to do something possibly a little bit different then. Um, right, we need another seven food. That is perennial, but it does need radiation protection. So that's gonna cost us four plus radiation protection of, of that, which is gonna cost six. So altogether, that will cost 10 of the monies to get, what was it, how much did that produce? That produces uh, only three sustenance. That's not very good, is it? That will get us up to 12, but then only leave us with, with what was that, six money left? And that's not enough to really do anything, is it? That is, that is pretty rubbish right there. We might need to do some more spinach. Might need to put some more spinach down and get us another dome thing. Is there another building we can do? No, that unlocks in year six. Okay. Um... Okay, yeah, we might need to put another dust dome down for four. So that'll bring us down to 12 monies. Then plant some spinach, which will bring us down to nine monies. So let's give that a go. So spinach just there. And then we want to get ourselves the dust dome because there is a dust storm. So that's fine. Ah, adjacency discount thing. Very nice. So now we have 10 money left and we need to get two food. Now, could we then, could we now do this? Could we say get a pepper, put that into there, that would be four, and get that thing, get the radiation shield, for six. That would use up all of our money, but we would have the right amount of food, and that would come back next year. Let's do that then, yes. We'll have a pepper, please, and then upgrade with radiation shield. So pop that in there, so now we have a radiation shield on some peppers. We're producing 17 food for the 16 people, yeah, okay, I think that's fine. Let's see how this goes. So the temperature is a little bit chilly, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's a bit parky. <laughs> Put some thermal pants on and the wind speed is, that's not, is that much? That, okay, that's quite a lot. That's real. that's lots of wind speed. But yeah, they're looking fine. The crops are looking good. And there we go. We got lots of lovely things. And yeah, the first year with no potatoes. I, I don't know if everybody would be happy or sad about that. Um, having a surplus of food at the end of each year can lead to more settlers arriving at the outpost. Okay, so we only had a surplus of one just then, but that's fine. It's better than none. Population up to 19. But now... Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. I knew that said that there was a, there was a thing planned, but you've you've crushed my crops, man. <laughs> you've, you've, you've squished them. That's a bit mean. Gale Crater Settlement expands and the mayor is thrilled. We try our uh, best to expand into empty plots of land, but we may build over some of the agriculture department's plots if none are available around the city centre, the mayor said of the recent expansion. There were other plots available. You, you've crushed our peppers. <laughs> you swines. Okay, so buildings. So what is that? Uh, solar panel. We can't afford one. It provides units of power. Okay. Right, do we have... Oh no, we're out of spinach. Oh, this is, this is very bad. Okay, I think we get two lots of potatoes. So that's come back for four. So that's, that's lovely. So we'll put that in. So that gives us, what's that? Eight units of food. We need to cope for 19. <laughs> no, how is this going to work? I don't know if it is going to work. Um, We could, we could put some of that. Oh, we should have put the arugula stuff up there. Can we change that now? No, we can't. We can't. Oh, no. Demolish it for a 50% refund. I was going to say we could put a heater thing up there and save a bit of money, but now I think we've lost the chance. We might have to do that next time around. Oh, dear. Um, okay. Well, how about we put some peppers... Can we, I mean, can we build here? Can we click this and build here? What happens if we click this? 
prepare this plot. It cost them three of our space monies to do this. Um, or do we build down here somewhere for an irrigation bonus? Although it does cost quite a lot of money. Oh no. <laughs> this is all sorts of terrible. Um, I, yeah, I wonder if we might struggle this time round. Let's put another one of those in there. So yay for more potatoes. We need seven more things. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, hang on. Could we, could we up here apply an upgrade to this? Could we put the, um, yeah, we don't need, no, we do need the irrigation and we do need the heater. So we need irrigation and heater. I was thinking maybe we could put arugula in that one there because that would give us seven food. Oh no, it doesn't give us seven. Does it give us seven? No, it gives us four. It costs seven. Oh no. Okay, right. What have we got <laughs> that can that can get us all of the stuff we need? We could plant arugula and the pepper. That would give us the seven food we need to actually get to the right amount of our colonists. But that's going to cost 11 of our monies, which leaves three money left. We don't need radiation protection because there is no radiation. So the pepper might actually be okay. If we just pop the pepper into, say, that one there... That's not so bad. So we'll put that in there. It's got a dust dome on it, which it doesn't need, but never mind. Um, but then, yeah, the arugula is going to need irrigation and cold snap protection, which is not going to work. So we might just have to get another potato plot somewhere. Um, okay. If we put potatoes just there, they're going to cost two. And then we need to upgrade it with irrigation for four and buy the plot for three. So, yeah, okay, we're going to have to do that. So, seeds, potatoes, which we're probably not going to have available next year, and then upgrade, put an irrigation system in for three. That leaves us with two money left. We're just about covering the right amount of food. Um, yeah, okay, right, run it through. Let's see what happens. Okay, it looks like they've survived the cold snaps. Everything looks pretty good to me. And there we go. Potatoes, arugula, and peppers. That is looking very good. Okay, yeah, I'll accept that. Does the population go up? It does. <laughs> Need some more monies. Okay, now that's Mark for expansion. I wish they would stop building all over our lovely plots. That's annoying. Okay, do we want iceberg lettuces, which earn us eight and sustain six? They could be quite good. Or garlic, which is perennial, but only sustains two. Let's have iceberg lettuce, please. Let's have a bit of that, shall we? Um, okay, do you know what? Yeah, Martian times, we've sort of seen that kind of thing before. So the peppers are in. And that arugula stuff is in for now. Unfortunately, it is going to get stomped on before before next time round, which is unfortunate. Um, how about, if that's marked for expansion, what we could do is, we'll, we'll grow that now, but then just here, could we get ourselves a heater? So pop a heater in just there, because it's adjacent to that existing one. So do that, and then plant some of that arugula stuff in there. So already... We've got ourselves 11 food, so we need another... Oh, we need another 11. Oh, dear. Right, well, we have some spinach that we can put in pretty much immediately. That's another five, so that doesn't cost very much at all. So now we need another... What do we need? Six food from nine monies, <laughs> and we are very much struggling here. Okay, there's no radiation coming. There is going to be a cold snap and a dust storm. Um... Oh, yeah, we're not going to get our stuff, are we? We want our iceberg lettuces next time round. So if we get some more spinach, we are going to need to put dust storm protection on things. We could do that because that gets another five food. And then the peppers could just go in here because they're absolutely fine. So they don't really matter. So how much is that going to cost? That's going to cost three for the spinach and four for the peppers. So that's seven. We've only got nine. <laughs> this is... This is unfortunate. I think we might not be able to feed everybody. Can, can you all bring your own food? Bring a packed lunch when you come to Mars, please. Uh, yeah, I think we're stuck. I think we are very, very much stuck. We're going to struggle with this, I believe. And yeah, we're going to lose that next time around as well, which is all very annoying. Um, okay, let's get ourselves some... Um, there's no point putting more of that arugula stuff in just there because we can't put the cold snap sort of protection heater thing on it. So I think we're just going to have to go for spinach just there and then pop a shield thing on top of it 
and then we've only got two money left. We can't do anything for two monies. We have we have nothing that we can do for two of your monies. Unless, hang on, hang on. Could we sell this? Demolish the dust dome? Because the peppers don't care about the dust dome. They're not bothered. They need radiation protection and there's no radiation coming up. Why don't we get rid of that dust dome for a 50% refund? That gives us three. That means we can then plant peppers just here. Oh no, we need another one. Oh no. <laughs> um, oh, we can't do anything else. Oh, we, we tried. We valiantly, valiantly tried. Hang on, can we get rid of the irrigation from this? Get rid of the irrigation from that. There we go. That gives us four. Then we pop some... Have we got peppers on the thing? Then put some peppers into there. Yay. Okay, right. We've had to change things around a bit. It'd be nice if we had some more money, please, folks. But there we go. 24 food for 22 people. Yeah, we need three people to move in, really. Three people moving in means that we complete this research thing and we get a great big pile of money, which would be very, very handy. But okay, here we go. Let's see. We can't do anything else. So the cold snap is going to kick in. Yep, yeah, it's very, very chilly. And then dust storm. It's very, very windy. And I think everything is looking happy. They've all got smiley faces. What's going to be built onto that thing, annoyingly? Boom, there we go. All the food comes out. They have squished our building with something terrible. Arugula, spinach and peppers. Okay, accept this. Ah, research is complete. The hunt for curiosity breakthrough. Thanks to your help growing the population, some scientists and explorers were able to locate the remains of the Curiosity Rover on Aeolis Palace, just southwest of the Gale Crater Outpost. 25 coins. That is wonderful. So we've 26 population, but now we've got a bit of money to play with. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's the Martian Times. Thank you. Okay, new seeds. Yes, we have lettuce. That can earn eight and sustain six. That is very, very good. Now that's annual. That's fine. We've made 10 food already. So we've got these three things here and not going anywhere. What seeds do we have? The spinach just needs a dust shield. So I'm tempted to just put a spinach down just to go boop. There we go. So already we've got 15 of the 26 we need. And yeah, we've got, we've got all these plots to expand into now. And we've got that one there as well. Let's put spinach into that one and then let's get ourselves now I'm, I'm not going to go too silly i'm not going to go giddy with this i'm going to spend all the money but then let's buy this plot in fact what we're going to put down uh lettuce so we want irrigation and a dust shield that's got a dust shield that's got a dust shield and irrigation next to it so it might be a good idea to buy that plot yes please pop down some lettuce seeds and then upgrade with an irrigation system yay happy and what else did they need dust storm protection satisfied oh because there's no dust storms happening there are going to be no dust storms this year so we don't need to worry about that 26 food for 26 people we make 29 monies and we get to we get to keep 33 money behind just in case we need it yeah okay yeah i'm happy with that let's run that on we don't need loads of excess food and there we go all the stuff has been harvested, which is lovely. Four different types of food. I mean, let, does lettuce does lettuce really count as a as a as a filling food? I mean, it surely you'd need to eat a lot of that. You'd need to eat a lot of lettuce to sort of sate your hunger. But okay, fine, we'll accept that. So population's up to thirty one. Good grief. Okay, oh, and they're gonna expand just here, are they? Ask Anita. Hello, Anita. You have amazing coloured hair. Hi, uh, hi, Anita. I just arrived on Mars and I'm happy to be here, but I have a problem. I'm horribly terrified of storms and worried that my fear of dust storms is going to keep me from having a good time whilst I'm here. Every time I see a dust storm on the horizon, I feel sick. What should I do? Sincerely, frightened. Hi, frightened. Dust storms can seem really intimidating at first. What I can say is this. Dust storms are not as scary as they sound. Because of the red planet's low atmospheric pressure, wind speeds won't really reach much higher than 96 kilometers an hour. You may see some dust devils or lightning during a dust storm, but as long as you're in a protective dome, you have nothing to worry about, Anita. Oh, there's like a little sort of agony aunt type column in the Martian Times. Okay, they're going to stamp on this, which is a shame. Ah, and we can't put spinach in there, which is unfortunate. Okay, never mind. Right, let's pop in some lettuce there. 
and then we'll put on a dust dome because there's going to be a dust storm coming. So there we go. So we've got 16 out of the 31 food we need already done, which is splendid. Everything else is looking pretty good. We do have a dust dome up there as well. So we could put some lettuce in there and then get ourselves an irrigation system. So there we go. So 22. And then it might be worth getting in some more permanent things. So say peppers. Again, there's going to be no radiation. So how about we buy that plot? Yes, please. And then just put some peppers into it. Just say peppers. There you go. Yay. And they'll just keep growing for a while. And then can we do the same with this plot? Yes. And put peppers into there. So that gets us, what's that, 28 food. And then we just need another three. I mean, do we do something else? Do we do something else? Do we get another arugula thing set up? It will need all the add-ons, but we could easily do that. If we put it up here, we'll get a bonus for one of those. Yeah, let's do that. Let's grab that plot. Let's put the arugula in it. And then let's get the upgrades. So let's give it... What does it need? Irrigation and cold snap. Okay, so give it the heater for the cold snap. Give it the irrigation to make it grow. We've got eight money left. We're going to earn 38 of this and we're going to make 32 food, which is more than enough for all of our people. And we are not going to put anything in there because that's going to get stamped on anyway. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Let's see what happens with year nine. Yay! It all looked pretty good to me. I think we got quite a lot of stuff out of there. Arugula, iceberg lettuce and peppers. I assume there's other things being bought in as well. They can't just be surviving on a diet of those. That would be very, very odd. But there we go. Okay, accept that report. Population up to 37 people now. Okay, now the good thing is a lot of these are perennial things. Ah, right. Garlic or maize? It's got to be maize. It's got to be maize. 11 sustenance. It costs a lot to put in, but you get 11 food out of it. Yeah, we will absolutely have some lovely corn. So it seems as though the settlers really like the food that you're growing. I personally think it's mediocre, but that, that's just my opinion. I am absolutely on board with you. <laughs> I think it is utterly mediocre. I agree. Okay, anyway, some citizens are now willing to pay double the price for specific crops each year. Okay, if you look under the seeds tab, you see that one crop has a green star next to it, indicating it's in high demand, and therefore worth more this year. Living on Mars doesn't uh, seem to warrant much pickiness in my opinion, but growing crops that are in high demand could be a good way to boost income. Okay, so what's in, in, what's in demand? Spinach. Okay, let's pop spinach into there, because there's already a slot for it. Um, they built another hospital, did they? That's another hospital they've put in place. So two hospitals and a school for 37, 37 people live here. What are they two hospitals for? Okay, ah, right. They, all the peppers are sad. We might need to get some radiation shields in or else they're going to be dead. Okay, one, two, three. Not enough power. Oh, right. Okay, we could be seeing ourselves in a bit of a pickle here. What can we put in this place here? Um, we need to get ourselves another 12 food. <laughs> oh dear. Um, it's irrigated and it has a shield on it. We could, we could get that again. That gets us five sustenance. So we could put spinach into there and the spinach is happy. We've got 30 money left to make seven things, but we haven't got enough power. Now, can we get enough power? A solar panel will get us 20 units of power, but it costs all of our money. Oh, I see. Some chaps built a mansion here as well. Brandon Kumar has built himself a Martian mansion, which sounds very good. So I don't know if that's... Is that using power? I've no idea, but we only have three power left. I'm not entirely sure what we can do just here. So we could build another thing. We could certainly get another plot, but we haven't got anything that's going to give us seven things. The lettuce give, gives us six. So that's not too far off. So we could plant some lettuce, but then, yeah, we haven't got enough power. We just don't have enough power. So we might have to take a little bit of a hit on this and then get ourselves a, a solar panel down now and then next time round be okay with extra power. But right now we, we just can't do anything. What have we got here? Current research, getting enough carbs. Um, five batches of potatoes, three batches of maize. Okay, we can try doing that at some point. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we've got any choice. I think we need to just sort of bite the bullet and go, right, there we go. Oh. 
This water tower uses processed Martian water that keeps the surrounding six plots well irrigated. Oh, that provides irrigation for extra things around it, but it does take up 10 power. We might just have to get ourselves a solar panel and just sort of just grin and bear it. Let's pop it. Let's put it down here somewhere out of the way. It doesn't really matter where it goes. Okay, everyone. Sorry. I've built, oh, hang on. I've built a solar panel. Prepare this plot. It's going to take six. Oh, no. We don't even own the plot. It costs six. <laughs> we can't even put the thing in. Um, right. So they're going to probably die. That's unfortunate. They're struggling. They're going to be fine. Does that need irrigation? That doesn't necessarily need irrigation, does it? Hang on. Hang on, roll over there. Get rid of irrigation for the peppers. That gives us 31 money, which means we could then, in theory, grab that and say yes, and then put in a solar panel for all of our monies. <laughs> there we go. So we have some power. Unfortunately, we're all going to go a bit hungry. I'm, I'm going to blame Brandon Kumar. Sorry. And yet yeah, they're, they're going to die as well. They're all going to die as well, because I have no money to sort them out. And those ones as well. It, it's going to be a bad farming year. It's going to be a terrible farming year. I'm just going to press the button and shut my eyes. <laughs> all the crops are just going to die off a bit. Yeah, how are they faring in the radiation? Um, they're not doing too bad right now, but yeah, look. The cold snap's going to not do anything to them. It's the radiation that's going to kill them, if anything. But, and yeah, but they, they, they didn't fare well. I don't think we got a lot out of them there. We took two points of radiation damage to the crops oh dear we produced 28 for 37 people <laughs> it was it was a year of dieting it's fine i'm sure they'll be okay oh dear the population came down by four so there was just dieting there was also some dying possibly as well but never mind the population's come down a tiny bit but now we have sufficient power to actually keep things going okay yeah they're upset with annoying radiation levels that's not my fault you've come to live on mars okay so 26 power we now have. We need we need quite a bit. We need to pretty much double our food provision. However, what we can do is... Ah, we've got new seeds. Yes, we've got maize. We've got maize, which is very good. What does it need? Radiation protection, of which there seems to be a lot of that going on. Good grief. And dust storm protection. Okay, well, can we put some maize into there? And then can we then get rid of the irrigation to get some money back? And then put in some radiation protection. Okay, so that gives us 29 out of 33, which is excellent for us. And then up here was the um, spinach. Now the spinach is looking good. We'll pop spinach back in there. So that gives us enough stuff. That gives us enough of our food to feed everybody. Um, so let's have a look at this then. So we're going to be growing one lot of maize. So do you want to try and expand out and grow some more maize, possibly? Let's get this plot ready for an extortion at seven. Ouch. Oh, no, hang on. Hang on. They need they need shield things. They haven't got radiation shields, and it's radiation-y. Radiation. Radiation. Ah, okay. Right, do you know what? Let's just let's run this forward. Let's get this sort of year out of the way, and let's save that money and uh, spend it next year on some nice things. I kind of want to get this done. 30 coins for doing that is going to be very, very good. But right now, yeah, we'll just we'll take 34 food for the 33 people. Okay, it went well. We earned much stuff. We've got 39 money now to put toward the next year's stuff. So we'll accept that. There we go. Population oh, up to 39. Oh, dear. Okay, right. So how much stuff do we now have? Oh, oh, okay. A thing is going to happen. Oh, a solar flare. Well, isn't that marvellous? So I feel like I should give you some warning about the solar flare predicted on the forecast this year, as if we needed another hazard to plan for, indeed. Solar flares are giant explosions on the surface of the sun. They affect us here on Mars by enhancing the radiation intensity we experience. Crops that are weak to radiation would likely suffer during solar flares unless properly protected. Okay, so it's just a radiation thing. Well, we have radiation shields on everything that needs it, so that should be fine. Um, that's got a radiation shield as well. Now, what did that have in it? Did that have the maize? Yeah, we'll put maize in again, because I think that's quite a good thing to have. Costs a bit, but then, yeah, look at that. The food's gone right up. So we need another We need another 10. We could do that with another maize thing. We could do that with another one of those. Let's prepare this plot here. So yes, please, for seven. And then we'll have radiation thingy on it. And we'll have dust shield thingy on it. And then we'll put maize into there which means we've got one more food than we need. So then what can we do? I mean, what was that one again? That was, ah, potatoes. We've kind of, we've overlooked potatoes. The humble spud has been overlooked. 
Um, let's put something... We could put potatoes in there, I suppose. We could grow some potatoes in there. They've got irrigation. That should be fine. Yay, there we go. And let's get ourselves... Do you know what? That'll probably do. That will probably do. We've only got six power left. So we just need to keep going, I think, working on the tiles that we now have. Um, yeah, okay. Well, let's see what we do there. All that looks pretty good to me. So what happens when we get to a solar flare? What actually happens? Is it just really, oh yeah, lots of wibbly solar flared nurses coming down, but I think everything is looking fine. We've got everything protected. Two lots of maize, that's providing an awful lot of lovely food. And boom, 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 boom. Absolutely. What a tremendous harvest that was. And okay, so we've made 44 food. We've got 40 money out of it. Thank you very much. Population up to 46. I'm imagining when it gets to 50, we might get promoted or something. I imagine that might be the case. I do not know. Okay, <laughs> ask Anita. I'm currently applying for a construction job at the agriculture department. Basically, I will be preparing the fields for agriculture development, including building the domes, temperature control, and pressure control systems. Do you have any tips for acing an interview unprepared? I'm prepared. It already seems like you know a lot about the requirements of building a habitable dome here on Mars. <laughs> they know more than I do. Luckily, there aren't that many people here at the outpost, so you probably don't have that much competition. That being said, make sure to remain calm during your interview, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, okie dokie. Right, so we're producing 18 food. I think we do exactly what we did before. So we put maize in there, we put maize in there, we put potatoes up there. That's 44. And then if we... Thing is, we've only got six power left. We've only got six power left. We could invest in a new solar panel down here. So how much is it going to be now? Seven for that, plus a solar panel is going to be... What's that? Hydroponic system? What's that do? It gives them a 50% sustenance boost. Ooh. Oh, that could be quite good. 50% sustenance boost. Oh, and they're going to ruin our crops over here. Stop ruining our things, <laughs> you swines. Um, yeah, how about if we take off the regular hydroponic system? What's that? Just an oh, irrigation system. Oh, as opposed to a hydroponic system. Oh. Does it... Yeah, it provides irrigation. Oh, yeah, that's quite good then. What does it do? And sustenance one and a half times. So we could get rid of the irrigation on that. So get rid of that. Uh, yeah, remove that. Let's put this in for fun. Why not? We'll pop that in. Uh, not enough power. Bother. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, let's get this done then. Yes. And then let's... Oh, no, this is never going to work now, is it? And then pop a solar panel in there. And that leaves us with 11 monies left. And how much was that thing? It was 12. Well, of course it was. Um, let's get rid of the dome thing here for those potatoes. For those things. Whatever that is. Yeah, potatoes. Because they don't need it. And now we've got 13 for us to put that thing onto there. And 46, 46. It only just covers... <laughs> it just covers our needs. Crikey's. Okay, right. On we go. I think everything should be fine. Yay! Harvest time, and I think everything grew, which is marvellous. So there we go. Lots of different types of things growing. We'll accept that. Thank you very much. Population is 54 now. Okay, now does that mean we get promoted or anything? Do we leave this place? No, we don't just yet. Um, okay, so what do you want to bring? Garlic or edamame? I think it's edamame. I'm never quite sure how you say that. Edamame? I, I don't know. Those, those things there. These sort of bean things. Um, yeah, they're quite good. Seven and seven. They do cost six to put down. Garlic is perennial, but it only brings in two. It's a bit rubbish, that is. You will have, we'll have the beans, I think. Ah, Gale Crater Settlement expands. The mayor is thrilled. We try our best to expand into empty plots of land. You've done it again, have you? You've done it again. You've built a museum. A museum for the 54 people that live here. Well, I hope it was worth crushing a source of food for. When you all go hungry, do not come complaining to me. Oh, that's interesting. There's a new building, which is a mealworm nursery. Give your citizens a great source of protein. It generates 10 units of sustenance per year. So it costs 30 to put in right now, and that takes up 15 power, but it will provide 10 units of sustenance for as long as it is there. We don't need to do anything to it. It will just make mealworms, and they can eat those. Do you know what? Why don't we put one of those down for fun? Let's, let's pop it over here somewhere. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, we're really low, actually. Food production is very low. Okay, right. No, we need to possibly not build that. Let's not build silly frippery things. Let's actually get proper stuff in. Right. Maze there. Maze there. That's 38. Oh, 54. 
we're gonna we're gonna struggle with this, I suspect. I think this is gonna be tricky. That's marked for expansion. We don't want to do too much with that. Do you know what we could put in there? Spuds. There are only two. So there we go. 42 out of the 54. So we need 12 more food. And we don't really have anywhere to put it. Someone's built another mansion. So Teresa Drake and Brandon Kumar now have mansions. They've each got a hospital. They've got a hospital each. That's fine. <laughs> one of them can go to the school and one of them can go to the museum. There we go. Brandon and Teresa have got this place locked down. So how about if we build... What do we need? We need another... Ah, oh yeah. We need another 11 things. We need another 12 food. The mate is going to cost nine to put down. Oh, no. This is never going to work. <laughs> We've got cold snap and a dust storm as well. Oh, dear. What we could do is we could remove some of these peppers here. So from here, let's demolish this plot's peppers for a 50% refund. So get rid of the peppers and then let's put in some more maize because maize gives you an absolute massive load of food. They will need to be covered for the dust storm. So that's fine. So we can put the little dust storm lid on for that. That leaves us with 11 money left and we need to get three food out of it. How are we going to do that? I mean, that's okay. We're only three down. I'd like to just get that covered off, though. I think that would be very, very good. Um, yeah, can we do that again with one of these? Can we take that out? No, hang on. How much is it to put down? It's nine for the maze. So we have to get rid of them and get a refund. I don't know how much we get from that. Let's, oh, let's just do it, shall we? There we go. So we've got 13. Oh, yeah, that's never going to work. That's not going to work, is it? So if we then say, what's the green bubble thing? A hyperdome? What does a hyperdome do? Radiation protection and dust storm protection. <gasps> Why didn't you alert me to the fact that we had a hyperdome in existence? A big green bubbly dome thing. Um, how about then we put maze into there. And then we've got four left. Where I think we can put the dust dome on top. And I think we're okay. I think we've done it. I think we've muddled through. Everything should be... Looking pretty good. So, uh, yeah. Okay, year 14. Let's go. And we produce 59 food to feed the 54 people, which is wonderful. So, there we go. We actually did pretty well there. Population goes up to 64. Um, we still haven't been promoted, I notice. Oh, however, what do we want? Uh, garlic or avocados? Avocados sound far more useful. They are very good for earnings. Very good for earnings. Um, they are perennial as well. So they're quite difficult to get in, but once they're in, I imagine they're quite good. So we'll pick avocados, please, and we'll clear the news. And then, um, so what we're on, year 15, we've got 64 settlers now, we've got 49 monies. I think, though, we'll call it quits for Red Planet Farming for now. I think we've seen enough to kind of get a picture of what's going on. And this is very, very good. I've enjoyed this an awful lot. Given that this is free, this is a free game, there's an awful lot going on in this game. It starts out relatively simple, possibly deceptively simple, where you just go, all right, I'll grow some potatoes and I'll grow some spinach. Oh, this is easy. Hooray. But then as you start getting different kind of requirements in, and you know, obviously the people, the developers start stamping on your plots and putting in hospitals and parks and whatnot. And, you know, and as the requirements change and you get different things coming with solar flares and dust storms and, you know, sort of uh, icy sort of periods, it, it does actually ramp up the difficulty actually is far more you know it's trickier than it seems on the surface but yeah that is very very good and of course yeah we've not really not really looked at all of these things I mean yeah what's that that's upgraded when the population reaches 85 is that or is that 65 oh we just won off seeing what that is but yeah we've got the self-sufficient dome now that provides irrigation radiation protection the hyperdomes they would be good for the maze which i imagine we've completely over sort of farm now yeah indeed it's out of stock so i think we'd struggle this year i think this year we would indeed struggle quite a lot to get that food in because we've only got 11 and we need 64 and we're nowhere near that so so yeah it's a very challenging game it starts off looking very very straightforward but actually it is quite tricky indeed and yeah i like this and i'm amazed it's free i'm absolutely amazed that this is a free game. So yes, it is well worth checking out if you like a little bit of sort of turn-based strategy because yeah, this is very, very good. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, then please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with everything else that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Oh no, not the piggy wigs. Want them to be healthy. Happy pigs, please. Raspberries, raspberries, raspberries everywhere. I went through and sold a load of turkeys as well, and they still come back. They're still coming back to haunt me. The storm moisture's going down. We need rain. We need rain. What's going... <laughs>